My name is David Bell. I, together with my wife Gillian, breed Irish setters under the Ballantine affix. First had an Irish setter in 1974 and I've had the breed ever since. We currently have eight Irish setters. The smallest puppy at the moment is five months old, up to her great great grandmother, who is now 13 years old. The Irish setter, or red setter, as many people know them, um, are commonly called red setters, obviously because of their colour. A number of years ago, they were always referred to as Irish red setters to differentiate them between the other setter breeds, the Irish red and white setter, of which the Irish setter derived from many years ago, the English setter, which are commonly the black and white or brown and white, or the Gordon setter, which are the black and tan setters. An Irish setter is a medium-sized dog. A bitch would be somewhere between 24 and 25 inches at the shoulder, and a dog about 26 to 27 inches. They have a rather refined head, not a broad head, rather long and narrow in head, and a square dog when measured from the withers to the ground and from the chest to the hind quarters. They have a long tail and they have a wonderful red chestnut coat with not over profuse feathering but a fair amount of coat and normally the coat has a small amount of wave in the coat. Irish setters were bred in Ireland to work on grouse moors, um, typically on grouse, but also on other terrains to uh, hunt for partridge uh, and other game birds. Originally, they were used to work with, uh, with birds, with falcons, and used with nets. And the introduction of the flintlock rifle, which developed them as a gun dog rather than a netting dog, they used to scent game and to point game. And then on the command of the gun, they flush the game. They're not a retrieving dog. And you will find that Irish setters will naturally quarter ground when they're just out exercising. But they are rather reluctant to retrieve and pick up things like a Labrador wood or a Spaniel. They're not a retrieving breed. And it's interestingly that even dogs that are a number of generations away from working dogs still do not have this natural tendency to retrieve, as in with the retriever breeds. But they do scent game, air scent, not ground scent. So they tend to move with their noses up in the air rather than down on the ground. Irish setters are a dog that really love life and love fun in life. They want to be part of your family. They're really good with children. We don't have children ourselves, but when our dogs do meet children, they, they are absolutely fine with children and accept children. Having said that, they are a dog that can be slightly aloof when they meet strangers. But once you've made a friend with an Irish setter, then you know you really do have a friend. They are a very affectionate dog. Irish setters are a very biddable dog and they're a dog that wish to please. But if you want a robot, a dog that just sits and does exactly as it's told, then an Irish setter may not be the dog for you. An Irish setter is a thinking dog. It will, yes, it will come to heel, it will come back when called, but it is easily distracted. They are a very intelligent dog. They're more intelligent than trainable. And I think that is the difference between an Irish setter and a Labrador. If they scent anything, they will want to go and find out where that is. And then they'll come back to you. We train our dogs with treats. They are very biddable and they will respond to you. They're a dog that really bonds with its owner and is very loyal to its owner. Irish setters love playing with toys. In fact, our puppy at the moment, it's difficult to hear the television sometimes because she has a squeaky toy that she just loves the sound of. And they generally will play 
with toys and play with each other with toys. So raggers, if you've got more than one dog, are wonderful uh, playthings for Irish setters. An Irish setter is fine as long as he is part of a family. And many puppies that we sell go to homes where it is the only dog. But a great number of people have more than one Irish setter and they do love the company of each other. They make really good pals together. I would seriously recommend to people that if they are having an Irish setter, to consider having more than one, but not two puppies of the same age. I think if you have an older dog, say when it gets to three or four, introduction of another puppy is good because that elder dog will then teach the younger puppy what to do. Often, people that have been to us before for puppies and they have an older dog that might be 10 years old, when they have a puppy, they find they now have two puppies again. Irish setters are very sociable with all types of dogs. Irish setters don't tend to differentiate between breeds of dogs, but they do have a sense dogs to keep away from. They're not a dog that will challenge other dogs or be aggressive to other dogs. As I say, they are fun dogs. Our Irish setters live with our cat, and we often find the dogs will move away when the cat comes in, and the cat often goes and eats out to the same bowl as the, uh, as the dogs. They're very good with other, other animals, but of course there must be a period of introduction. And if a puppy is introduced with uh, a cat or other animal, you'll find that they're very biddable with those as well as humans. Iris setters are not a yappy dog, but they are a dog that will let you know there's somebody around. If they're apprehensive about anything, they will bark to let you know that they are a little bit noisy when they're exercising when they're enthusiastic about running, or especially with birds, but generally speaking, they're not a noisy dog. An Irish setter, like any medium-sized dog, needs regular exercise. Needs to be able to have some walking time, probably 30 minutes a day, but needs some off-the-lead exercise each day. But the most important thing is that not only is physical exercise, but in mental exercise. An Irish setter needs to be stimulated. They need to be part of the family. They need to have fun. An Irish setter is not a docile dog. It is an active dog, but it's a dog that will rest. But when activities are needed, they're up and ready to go. They are a dog for the active person, but they're not an overactive dog. Irish setters have always been laughed at, I suppose, when it comes to obedience work. But we do have a number of friends with Irish setters that do agility with their dogs and he'll work to music. We have a friend currently who is working an Irish setter to quite a good standard on he'll work to music. But they're not a dog that will just easily do as it's told. I think an Irish setter is, um, is a good match for some of the more creative sports that we have um, with dogs now, such as heel work to music or dancing with dogs. We introduce our puppies to training and ensure that each of our puppies completes the puppy foundation course that the Kennel Club run and then on to the Good Citizen schemes. And there are a number of Irish setters that complete the bronze, silver and gold awards. Their national show, which is held once each year, not only is the beauty on show, but also they have agility, working tests, hunting tests, to show the whole range of activities that Irish setters can do. And of course, Irish setters compete in field trials in this country. We have field trial sections in our breed club, and we have a number of people that do train their dogs to the natural working ability that they were bred for. Irish setters are a long-coated breed. They do need um, a certain amount of grooming, but I would say they need grooming on a regular basis rather than lots of grooming. They're not a breed that you need to take regularly to a grooming parlour to have trimmed. Grooming is fairly minimal. 
in that it's common sense to keep hair from under ears short and the neck which is more of a health issue to keep hair away from the ears and also to trim feet so they don't get foreign bodies into toes but regular combing and grooming will keep an Irish setter in good coat and condition. We tend to use a good quality bristle brush to brush the upper coat and we use a pin brush to brush the feathering and if you do this at least once every other day then you'll ensure that you don't have mats or foreign bodies in the coat of the dog which can cause irritation. We usually bath our dogs for shows but for Irish setters that are not show dogs then I would say that bathing would be perhaps once every three months. Irish setters like all long-haired breeds do molt. Different to a Labrador with a short prickly hair, they tend to have a long silky coat. When you're brushing your own hair, you see long hairs in your brush. It's that type of hair that you tend to find. But yes, they are a dog that do molt, and they molt particularly bitches on different times during the year, whether they're in full coat or going out of coat and changing coat. If you talk to um, most vets about Irish setters, they will tell you that they have problems with eyes. Now this started in the 1940s when a condition known as progressive retinal atrophy, PRA, was noticed in Irish setters and it was commonly called night blindness. Now in those days, we had no DNA tests to see whether dogs were either carriers or affected by the disease. Now, Irish Setters were one of the first breeds to develop a DNA test in conjunction with the Animal Health Trust for PRA and a condition for RCD1, which is an early onset PRA. Now, all Irish Setters today are DNA tested for that condition or come from stock that have been DNA tested for that condition. So that particular eye problem has been eliminated from the breed. However, we have recently had reports of a later onset variety of PRA called RCD4, which is the same type of condition, but develops very late in life. And I'm talking about dogs that are about 12 years old. Now, a DNA test has been developed by the Animal Health Trust, and we're currently in a program of testing all breeding stock for the breed. Now this is very much a precautionary measure as to date I think we have only recorded about seven or eight dogs that have actually been afflicted by this condition. But with the help of Irish, the Irish Setter Breeders and the Animal Health Trust this condition has will now be eliminated from our breeding programs and of the breed in the mid-1990s, we also had a condition called CLAD, which is Canine Lucidite Adhesive Deficiency. Again, with the Animal Health Trust, a DNA test was developed for that, and now all stock is clear of CLAD. So Irish setters generally are a very healthy breed. Having said that, they can be affected in very small numbers by conditions which affect many breeds, such as epilepsy or gastric torsion. Although it's known in the breed, it's not in significant numbers. However, the Animal Health Trust are trying to develop a DNA test to rid not only Irish setters, but a great number of breeds from this condition. Irish setters, generally speaking, do not suffer from hip dysplasia. However, many breeders do hip score breeding stock. The breed average for Irish setters is around 13 and generally speaking Irish setters do not suffer from hip dysplasia but of course there are always exceptions. If you consider wanting to own an Irish setter I would advise the best thing to do is to try and find an, owner set, an Irish setter breeder or owner ask if you can go along and meet the dogs. I think by doing this you will find if an Irish setter is the type of dog for you. If you have to work all day, then an Irish setter is not a dog for you. Irish setters do need exercise, but first and foremost, they need human company and they need to be part of a family. 
They're not a dog that you can just leave. You need to be part of a family and part of your life. And they are a fairly long living dog. On average, I would say 12 years old to 14 years old. So when you're making that commitment to have an Irish setter puppy, remember you're gonna have this Irish setter for at least another 12 years. From my experience, there's not really any difference between a dog or a bitch as far as Irish setters are concerned. We ourselves love male dogs. They tend to be more affectionate. Bitches can be a little aloof, but there is not really a great difference between a male or a female. Irish setters are a breed that, as we say, get under your skin. They have a particular temperament. They have a great sense of humour. If you're not feeling so good someday, the Irish setter is always happy to sit and listen to what you've got to say for them, to them, or to go out for a run. They are a breed that people keep coming back to. You'll often meet people in the street that say, what a lovely dog, what a lovely red coat, what a lovely colour. There's much more to an Irish setter than its looks. Irish setters are really faithful, biddable, and a dog that you can trust. Mm -hmm.